Hello. Well, today I want to just uh, give you a, you know, another update of uh, some new movies I've gotten. You know, um, I've accumulated some since like the summer. <clears throat> um, one film I ordered, um, which is also Criterion related, as well as I have some something else regarding Criterion, um, but I'll get to that near the end of the video. Um, but yeah, met the. Um, got some sort of like upgrades I guess you could say uh, um, like uh, first uh, you know we've got a clockwork orange talked about this uh, before earlier in the year uh, I believe and I got the this on 4k and um, got the steel book um, now uh, I know this film isn't for everybody I think I even said that uh, in the video where I discussed it my thoughts and all but you know I enjoy this film you know 4k blu-ray uh, normal blu-ray sort of like in here and um, digital um, I'm keeping this due to uh, has him has like a something that this version does not have um, it has a documentary about Stanley Kubrick and his life, and this does not have that. Um, does have a uh, yeah, does have um, basically all, most of all the other stuff, but you know that's something that this uh, the four K version does not have. Um, don't know why. Maybe it has some sort of rights issue, though. This is Warner Brothers releasing it. Um, but, you know, this um, was actually part of the packaging, but it was actually uh, fairly simple to peel off. And I thought it'd be kind of cool just to take it and see if I could get it off and then put it on here. And I did, and obviously very successfully. Because, you know, otherwise it's like, yeah, it's a steel book, you know. But, you know, you know this is the uh, 40th anniversary this is the 50th, so in 10 years, there's a new kind of Blu-ray, you know, in 4K. So there is an upgrade. Picture quality and sound, you know. Yeah. Some movies, I think that uh, an upgrade is actually f uh, fairly worth it. If I, you know, if I really enjoy the film, I have absolutely no problem buying it again if I think, uh, if I really enjoy it. Um, again, I know... Not everybody likes this film. Uh, understandable. I see why. <laughs> you know, it's not. It does not. It is not lost on me as to why people don't like this film. Um, the same with other movies too. Um, but you know, yeah. So here is the original, just normal Blu-ray, and here is the uh, 4K Blu-ray and Blu-ray combo pack. Um, this is the steel book, of course, from, from uh, Best Buy. And I got this because it just looked better. Um, uh, basically, you know, it's like this, but just these three silhouettes. Yeah, it was just like... It was alright for the, just the normal look, but I thought if I'm able to get the uh, normal... Uh, or if I'm able to get the steel book, I'd be able to... I had to get this online because, you know... Went to the store and, you know, I wasn't there, unfortunately. Um, but that happens. Um, and that also happened with uh, this other release I upgraded on. This, uh, for most of these, these are upgrades, but uh, there are some new things. Like, at least. Yeah. Um, so uh, here is a uh, three. A uh, film set of Christian Bale movies, uh, American Psycho and Cut Version, uh, 310 to Yuma and Velvet Gold, Gold Mine. Um, very good films. Uh, I really got this for, well, I got them for all three films, but, you know, I originally just had uh, this on DVD, but then I gave that to my mom. She enjoys the film, so I thought, you know, that's a, at least that's a, you know, pretty good. Plus, I get two other movies I 
had, uh, didn't own. I had seen 310 to Yuma, but I didn't own it at that point. Um, never saw a Velvet Goldmine before, so when I got it, this is um, it was like the first time I uh, ever uh, saw it, and it's pretty. De it was a decent film. Um, yeah, quite different, but uh, yeah. yeah, very interesting. Aside from Christian Bale, has Hugh McGregor, so you know, yeah. So that was the that's the DVD, and then I have the uh, normal Blu-ray. Now, one thing that the this Blu-ray and also this one, uh, the. Uh, uh, 4k blu-ray and also normal blu-ray comes in with this um, you know the, the, the blu-ray uh, had a special feature missing you know the normal blu-ray that uh, you know that the DVD had that for whatever reason this didn't and um, but the 4k actually does have it you know the 4k which is something I'm actually kind of happy with um, like with this release, as well as some of the others I've seen and have also gotten since. Um, but also, here's this. One reason I also I wanted to get the uh, uh, Steelbook version for this at Best Buy also. Also had to get this online because, you know, stores and such, you know, uh, ran out quickly. Um, but the reason I got the Steelbook is because it has this little, like, little slip cover. That's pretty cool. And also, in there it says, Feed Me a Stray Cat. Which, if you've seen the film, you know what that means. And of course, you know, here's the back. Um, still have that yellow Best Buy sticker on it because sometimes those things are a little hard to get off. And yeah, I'm just like, I don't necessarily want to yeah, try and get this off and you know take longer than need be um, but the back of it is uh, you know the axe and of course you know this is like a, in the beginning of the film where he's like has that face uh, you know that thing for his face that he makes sure you you know makes his skin look you know, it'll be healthy and such um, but yeah you know, but again, uh, with this and the 4K uh, version, this uh, has a uh, the special feature that the normal Blu-ray was missing, and that is um, American Psycho from book to screen. Because there's a doc, a little like a documentary or feature or whatever you want to call it of um, the 80s downtown, which is on here. You know, and that's a fine special feature. Nothing wrong with that, but. Between the two, um, uh, from book to screen, that's better, I think, in my opinion, because it's you know it's a documentary about the film. I like documentaries uh, regarding movies. Um, has the, even though it doesn't say here on listed in the special features, it does have an auto commentary with the director Marion Heron, but the only one they list of her uh, giving. Uh, commentary is on the 4k version for whatever reason so the 4k disc has that like the new commentary she gave and then both the 4k disc and the normal blu-ray has um, uh, the commentary with writer Guinevere Turner um, well yeah you know and since this also has a blu-ray I might you know maybe give this to my mom also She'd like it, you know. That's something I like to do sometimes. Like you know, you get like an upgrade of sorts, and you know, if you find somebody in your family or friends who, you know, enjoys a certain movie, you know, and you have and you like upgraded, and then, you know, if all the and for me, like if it has the upgrade has all the special features and stuff of the previous thing. You know, I'll be happy to uh, depart uh, with my previous release, you know, just like for me, like 
just a normal Blu-ray, I won't really have a problem with that. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, moving on. Um, uh, here's the Scream trilogy, but mostly I want to talk about, you know, just primarily to show, you know, the first screening, because I got the, I also got the Steelbook uh, version, because the Best Buy Steelbooks I've noticed are just look a little better. You know, some steel books they don't look all that great and and I'm not somebody who I have to have every single steel book, but or any of that, but you know, if there's a steel book that just looks better um of course, you know, the contents and everything is all the same. I understand that, I know it, but I don't know. If I if I'm going to own a film, you know, and if there is an upgrade, you know, where, you know, you can you know, you know, get something where the movie looks and sounds, you know, better than ever, you know, I'll have no problem, you know, buying it. Um, but I don't always want to just get the steel book because it's the steel book. I've seen some steel books that don't look very good. Or, or not necessarily they don't look good, but they're just very unimpressive compared to what the normal release is. I, uh, there's apparently a website that had like a steel book for the film Nobody. It was just like Bob Odenkirk with the, like his face with through the nobody logo, and the rest is just yellow. And that was really it. Um, through this, like this website, uh, I'm blanking on it because I don't really use it much, um, or I haven't really used it, but I looked through it, and some of the stuff I would like are sold out. And if I wanted to get them, they're like on eBay or Amazon through sellers, and you know, depending on the film, you know, sometimes it might be reasonable, sometimes they're not. So it's always a gamble. But those are also fairly pricey on that website, also, just because, you know, it's sort of like an exclusive thing. It's not going to be sold in stores or on the official website associated with the film. So, you know, understandable, or understandably, it is a little pricier. Um, Steelbooks usually are. Though as time has gone on, I've noticed, you know, since steelbooks are sort of now sort of fairly common, they're not as expensive. You know, this was like, uh, I think $30, where the normal 4K is, like, I believe when I last looked, was 25 um, And then the new Blu-ray, like, re-release is, uh, like, version is um, just... Uh, like 20 and one reason I got this was because you know you see the, the ghost face in the uh, knife um, and the normal typical one is uh, the famous you know Drew Barrymore you know on the poster like this uh, without those like uh, uh, these guys he's uh five people in front of it. It's just Drew Barrymore's, you know, her hand over her mouth, you know. Um, that's basically what the normal uh, look is. For for those who don't know, you know, I'm sure for a good, you know, for some of you, you might already know that, but for those who don't, you know, I think that was why I also, you know, that's really why I wanted this aside from just the upgrade, because I, I love Scream. Scream is fantastic, and also, I will be, all of next month, because it is t the 25th anniversary, I will be talking next month all Scream. All four Scream films, and I made one video, just giving my overall thoughts on the franchise as a whole, and also before the next film, uh, and the franchise comes out, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, 25 years ago, Scream came out, um, and it really uh help uh save the horror genre primarily slasher films again i know not everybody likes slasher films which i could see why people wouldn't like american psycho understandable the content and all um it is not uh, lost on me whatsoever why people may not be fond of scream or american psycho but um I enjoy them. I think they're fine films. Um, um, 
And now for the Criterion section of the, you know, of the uh, video. Um, now, as I said, I ordered, I have ordered this, pre-ordered it specifically, uh, this film, um, in, in the summer, in July. Uh, not through the fifty percent uh, off Barnes and Noble sale, um, but. Uh, on the Criterion's website, I, I also noticed that it was actually a bit cheaper uh, through Criterion. It was like thirty-one dollars, and uh, I don't know for whatever reason this film. You know, you couldn't pre-order it and get fifty percent off, which was unfortunate. So, had I pre-ordered it through Barnes and Noble, I would have been, you know, it'd be like forty dollars, um, but. No, I uh, went to Criterion's website, and surprisingly, it was like, you know, nine dollars cheaper. Of course, there's always, you know, tax and all that stuff, so closer to like thirty-two or something. But then, you know, you could also save about like forty-one something or so with, uh, you know, if or if you're Barnes and Noble. But there was actually a pretty good uh, deal on that, and. This film is Mona Lisa. Um, this, along with um, Sid and Nancy, which I've talked about uh, before, right there. I don't want to just get it out <laughs> now and have to have some movies fall on me, possibly. Um, but, you know, uh, like Sid and Nancy, this film was in the Criterion Collection in the DVD era. Um, I don't believe it was on a laser disc. Uh, if it was, it's uh, it's blanking on me when that happened. But I know it was on DVD, and like out in the '90s, and then sometime later, you know, Criterion didn't get the, it wasn't able, weren't able to renew the rights to the film. You know, to keep it in their collection to sell, and it went out of print. Um, and like Sid and Nancy before, I did a look to see if I could find it. Um, and I did, but unlike Sid and Nancy for the DVD, um, uh, they, I never really found a DVD of version of this from Criterion, or from the Criterion version of the DVD, uh, that was a fairly reasonable price. You know, I, I believe for Sid and Nancy it was like 60 some. It was like sixty dollars or something like plus tax and maybe shipping because it was like from eBay or something. And considering the fact that it was out of print since the like the nineties, early two thousand, um, that's a pretty good deal. Plus the DVD was in very good condition, very well taken care of, and it disc worked. Um, that's also another thing. You know, uh, I don't really buy stuff through Amazon sellers or. Um, eBay uh, often because there's always the chance that if you like buy a DVD or something you know, that's out of print that um, you know that it's just very you know the disc might not work or there's a lot you know there's a lot of scratches or something and you know say in good condition or something of that nature and you get it and it isn't you know that's unfortunate that's that's uh, but I was lucky with Sid and Nancy, but also I was never able to get the chance for Mona Lisa. Um, um, and this was a fil another film that I saw on Turner Classic Movies. I know I mentioned that channel a lot, but you know they do have many good uh, films uh, here and there. Sometimes there's some movies that are very, meh, and you, you know you'd rather not necessarily watch you know either they're you, you don't you know for a fact you don't like it or it's one you've seen or it's one that you've heard of and then but it doesn't sound interesting you might start to watch part of it um and it's not it grabbing your attention and you might turn the channel um this was not one of those cases i loved it from beginning to end um bob hoskins got nominated for an academy award he actually won every single award up to the Academy Awards. Uh, 
that he was nominated, the Golden Globe, the BAFTA, and any other festival and critics uh, awards he was nominated for. Um, he did not win the Academy Award because you know, that went to Paul Newman for um, The Color of Money, a sequel to The Hustler. Um, people look at that and say, you know, that was for, you know, that Oscar was for like The Hustler and Cool Hand Luke and various other films that he likely should have won an Academy Award for, but because he was looked over so many times, uh, they finally had to just give it to him, give him the Oscar, and they gave it at a time where the best uh, actor that was nominated didn't get to go home with the top prize, but you know, that does happen. I might talk about that a little bit here and there and some of my thoughts on the people nominated that year when I ever, you know, when I do discuss this film. Um, this film also has uh, Cicely Tyson and Michael Caine. It is, it's a British film, just to keep that in mind. You know, everybody is British and, um, you know, uh, and I only say that because, you know, you, there might be some people who, it might be a problem. You know, it's not a foreign film, necessarily. Um, I know there are some people who aren't too fond of foreign films, like they don't speak English. Um, but, you know, it really depends on the movie, I would say. Um, but this is an excellent film. If you have a chance, I'd say give it a watch at least once. Um, I mean, you know, Bob Hoskins' performance is incredible. I mean, everyone's performance is incredible, but, you know, Hoskins definitely earned his... Uh, Oscar nomination for sure and you know I don't know of the nominees he definitely should have won in my opinion um, and now for another uh, criterion uh, title uh, I'm going to show you my first release of this or the version that I have because you know I uh kind of like to do that. Also, I did that with the others that I just you know, got like upgrades for. So, that film is Uncut Gems. Um, I think I talked about this in 2019. This was actually the last film I saw in theaters before like things closed down for a good portion of 2020. Of course, the first film I saw back in the theater was the re-release of Inception, but uh, prior to that, Uncut Gems was the last film, you know, which was in Christmas of uh, 2019, and uh, yeah, you know, I enjoy this film. It's fantastic. Um, um, if you're somebody like me who really enjoys special features, this has a Money on the Street, The Making of Uncut Gems, you know, very good uh, making of documentary, but that's the only special feature. Um, yeah, that is definitely that's highlighted, so, but, you know, so, <laughs> there is that, um, but also, you know, there, of course, Uncut Gems, and I actually, uh, today is... 23rd that I'm recording this and I got this today just came out and rewatched it not that long ago before recording and it's still fantastic you know the presentation and everything looks fantastic um, there's more special features on here you know um, some short films and you know documentaries and New interviews and commentary. Um, yeah, uh, deleted scenes, extended scenes, um, and then of course an essay. You know, but you know, fantastic film. It's one of my favorites from 2019. Um, Adam Sandler gives an incredible performance. There is a lot of anxiety in this film as it goes on. I think I probably mentioned that when I talked about it, because I'm pretty sure I did talk about this film not long after I saw it. Um, Sandler 
gave an Oscar worthy performance that he should have been nominated for, but unfortunately he was not. Um, but you know, and again I might uh, uh, give this uh, Blu-ray away to uh, family members. I I know there are some who enjoy it. I, my mom saw so my I believe she enjoyed it. She liked it, or you know, I know she liked Adam Sandler. And I remember that. Um, you know, she saw she thought he was really good and deserved an Oscar nomination. Also, a lot of people do. Um, there are people who are who do criticize the Criterion Collection for having films this fairly new. You know, 2019, two about two years old. You know, December it will definitely be two thousand uh, two years old. Uh, but, you know, um, and Wes Anderson is somebody who has a deal where, like, after a few years or so, you know, his new, whatever the newest film he has released will get into the Criterion Collection. Um, I think there might be some other deals like that also with certain directors and studios who work with those directors or something. So I know there are certain exceptions, but, you know, I do like how this is one of the very first 4K Criterion releases. You know, it's very incredible film, you know, visually and the soundtrack, the sound effects and everything. It's just everything about this film is really uh, uh, very captivating. You know, there is a lot of foul language in this, so, you know, um, be on the lookout if you haven't seen it. With that, um, as it says here, pervasive strong language. Yeah, and I also looked on IMDb because they have a thing where you can yeah, people actually count how many times, like how many swear words are said. Like there's like 760 or, or 700 something uh, uh, swear words used in this movie, and 560 are is the f word. So. Yeah, that's more than a Tarant than Tarantino puts in just one of his films. So the Safdie brothers, I guess you know, in, in an area, one upped Quentin Tarantino. Um, and also, uh, Martin Scorsese is an executive producer. So, you know, I forgot he was. When I rewatched because it. it's been a while since I've watched this film, um, and I purposely, when I heard that this was getting a. a, a the, coming to the Criterion Collection, then after a while, oh, it's not just on the Criterion Collection, but it's also going to be in 4K, one of their first 4K releases that's lined up. So, I thought that's really cool. Um, but yeah, uh, the whole point of the Criterion Collection, as it says, is like a continuing series of important classic and contemporary films. You know, I think Uncut Gems does fall in this category. It is very incredible it's fantastic it's just uh, really good from beginning to end um, in my opinion uh, you, know, you know and there's also some uh, you know sexual content some sexual content there's violence some brief drug use um, so you know there's definitely some stuff in this film that might not make it for everybody um, it's from A24, a company that over the years people really like. You know, It's seen as a Hollywood company, but to me it seems like it's an independent company that's really well. It has like a cult following. Something that a, any kind of film studio, you know, indie or major, doesn't have. Like no studio has a cult following where so many of, you know, films are so regarded incredibly well. Um... The Safety Brothers did a great job, and um, you know, I hope this is a good sign for like E24 and also the Safety Brothers. You know, I think it would be cr really excellent if Good Time uh, got a release, um, as well as if and plus with um, Uncut Gems, uh, you know, being getting its release. I think it'd be fantastic if a film like The Lighthouse that all that came out in 2019 also. And as I've mentioned before, it's my favorite film of 2019. And it's an excellent uh, psychological horror film. You know, with 
fantastic Oscar-worthy performances by Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. I love this film also. It's, uh, you know, both these films just got sort of like snubbed at the Academy Awards. Um, though this film did get recognized for cinematography, so I guess it didn't get shut out entirely, but it's unfortunate that, you know, um, it didn't get more nominations, nor did uh, uh, Uncut Gems get anything, you know. Not even a nomination for Adam Sandler for his acting. I mean, that's I think that's a real travesty with Uncut Gems and, you know, and the Oscars. Also, I'm like, at the very least, I'm like, I thought, should I at least nominate Pattinson for Best Actor? That's, he is the main focus, and we see we're pretty much in his shoes throughout the whole film. And we see him more. Uh, there's very few scenes where Willem Dafoe um, uh, is on screen. Uh, well, I, well, I should say, like, there's, there isn't as many Willem Dafoe scenes. That that's what I meant to say. There are some. There's a few. But, you know, we're mostly with Robert Pattinson. Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor nominations. You know, it should have happened, but unfortunately. Sort of like how Best Actor nomination should have happened at the very bare minimum. But regardless if any either of them, any of these guys would have won, that's another story. Um, now, I do want to talk about one more thing. It is Criterion related, but I didn't get this film. Uh, because when I went to Barnes & Noble and looked around, I couldn't find it. I was finally able to, you know, get a hold of somebody ask about it. And, uh, and that film is, you know, Citizen Kane. Um, but, the you know, the thing with Citizen Kane is uh, there was a, uh error on the first... Blu-ray disc, first normal Blu-ray disc, because that's a three-disc set, set. There's the 4K Blu-ray disc, and then the, you know, of course, the, uh, <clears throat> uh, there's two normal Blu-ray discs, and um, apparently from at the 30-minute mark to the very end of the film on the first disc, And this apparently affected every release because it's also on just normal, you know, Blu-ray also. You get two Blu-ray discs. And then, of course, you know, the 4K Blu-ray if you want to buy the uh, the three-disc set. Um, you know, for that Blu-ray disc, there's like just some error where there's like some little sound or something. That's there from the 30-minute mark to the end. And so they're doing stuff to get that fixed. Some people are criticizing it because it's not like Shout Factories, how they handle it with like the um, <clears throat> uh, the Friday the Thirteenth set, where you go uh, to their website and you then email with the certain things like say which discs you need replaced. You know, give proof of purchase. So if you ordered or pre-ordered online, you have a snapshot of that as your like a receipt. Or if you actually went to the store, you found out when you went or went to watch it at home. That and you, I guess if you bought it in the store, you should have the um, receipt. So you take a picture of it, and then uh, from there, I guess you, you know. If, though of course you know, Shout Factory didn't really have stuff of theirs in stores very often uh let alone box sets but you know if you were able to buy that at the store picture of that and there you go and then they'd send you a copy uh, or a new disc or discs no charge to you people are complaining though with citizen kane and how criterion is handling it where what you do is you uh You send the disc to them, and you will have to like like pay uh, uh, postage and such to mail it to 
you know, their address, and then when they rectify and fix the issue that there is, which likely happened at the manufacturing when they were, like, the, I'm sure, like, the master copy of the Blu-ray was fine, but, you know, something happened in the manufacturing that affected most, if not all, of the discs printed and copied and to be manufactured. And so, from there, you know, they, uh, um, There's a problem, but you know, there, a lot of people are a, a little annoyed by that. Like, you know, Shout Factory didn't have you send the discs to them. They're gonna send uh, send you some fixed stuff. You know, discs with the fix and correct uh, uh, stuff. And some say it should have been like the same for everybody with the Citizen Kane. Um, and I have no problem uh, waiting, you know, knowing this. You know, I'm just actually kind of thankful I actually waited and didn't pre-order Citizen Kane now. Because part of me was like, oh, it would have been cool to just buy buy it, you know, pre-order it with my gun cut jibs. But I'm like, I haven't been to Barnes & Noble in a while. And I just like going to, you know, sometimes I just like going to a store. If you know what I mean. It's just, there's just something that's great about it, in my opinion. I just really like it. I know that's not for everybody. Um, you know, with the internet and how everything is, it's kind of nice to be able to be at home or, you know, and order things or pre-order things and not have the hassle of having to go to the store or whatever store it is, like in this case, Barnes & Noble, oh, hope, pray, what have you, to that the uh, one copy, at least, of the version of the movie that you want is there and uh, you won't have to sort of order it or anything um, but you know uh, there is that there is an annoyance factor that people have but you know yeah uh, I wanted to say something about that because I did plan to get this of course I was hoping on it but you know still have my 70th anniversary I think I actually just keep this version just because um, it's really good, and I think there are some stuff that isn't even included in the new version. So it was like, you know, if I did get rid of this, I would be losing, like, a special feature or something that, uh, that is actually good. Or might be actually the Battle Over Citizen Kane DVD. I think that's what it is. You know, this has that, you know, there's the movie, and then there's the Battle Over Citizen Kane documentary um very good documentary um but you know i wanted to mention that because you know that's a big release here for criterion and there are a lot of people talking about it so i don't have it but as soon as they release something you know i found on twitter them talking about it because i didn't get an email <clears throat> about this happening I went to Barnes & Noble, had no clue where it was, thinking, oh, I came too late or something, even though it was actually, you know, pretty decent where there wouldn't be a lot of people there, but you, you never know. Some people might have just gone there and, you know, uh, really early, like as soon as it opened and bought all the copies, but nope, uh, you know, Criterion recalled every copy at every Barnes & Noble because of this error. Um, and, you know, people who pre-ordered it likely got the news uh, or found out about it and reported to Criterion. And, you know, hopefully to those who might have ordered it later and wouldn't get it uh, either bef before or maybe even today, of the release of it. Hopefully they all got notified, um, and hopefully Criterion will have a email or something in the near future regarding it, and uh, have an estimated time as to when the issue will be fixed, as well as when, you know, 
new versions will be made and printed out and, and replacements will be on the way for those who have already gotten it. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I wanted to mention that I, I plan to get this when it came out, but because of that I couldn't, but you know, not the worst thing in the world. Um, you know, all the things considering. And the last thing I want to actually talk about is not even a new movie I got, but it is pertaining to this film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, you know, I, uh, I enjoy this film. I'm pretty sure I talked about this before, and, you know, I'm sure I will talk about it again, um, in the, sometime in the future. Um, but yeah, really enjoy this film. Fantastic. Um, and Quentin Tarantino himself adapted uh, a novelization of the film. And first he had it released on paperback, which is basically the opposite of what you do. And then later he uh, released it on hardback. Or hardcover, I should say. Um, yeah. I, uh, can't wait to really get into this, uh, some, uh, you know, that's more than just, you know, what you see in the film, and even some of the deleted scenes, because there's a lot of stuff that was cut out that you don't even see, um, in the deleted scenes, um, and there's even some pictures here, as it says, you know, this is the deluxe edition featuring new photos and bonus material, so that's kind of cool. Um, but there is one picture I definitely want to show you all, and that is this Tim Roth scene that, uh, in the film, it's that it shows his, his name in the credits, but it says, you know, Tim Roth cut. So he gets to have credit despite... Not even ending up in the final cut, which I'm sure that goes to the long collaboration of Tim Roth and uh, Tarantino since, you know, all the way from Reservoir Dog, like his you know, first film and all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, um, I can't wait to just uh, read and see all the stuff that wasn't included, as well as the backstory of Cliff. You get to know more about him and all that stuff. So, I, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to read this. Uh, Tarantino is a very fantastic writer. Um, and, uh, this is a film I really love and I enjoy. So, uh, hopefully I'll enjoy the book as well. Um, so, yeah. This was a long video. I didn't necessarily intend it to be this long, but, you know, I had some stuff I, w I wanted to say about these movies along the way, of course. And, um, but yeah. Uh, got some good upgrades. Got some, uh, some new stuff that I hadn't have, didn't have before. Um, I do think the original paperback of once Upon a Time in Hollywood did have pictures, so I guess these are different. I don't know. But anyway, I uh, hope you all have uh, had a good Thanksgiving yesterday here in America. I hope all of you are having a great day. hope you all have a, are having a great weekend. hope you all have a great week. I'll see you all next time.